All right, partner, we're closing in on 2023 Ravens training camp, and I think it's the perfect time to speak to one of the rookies. We've teased this a couple times in recent weeks, and we are very excited to be bringing in our next featured guest here inside the vault. It is rookie Oregon tackle uh, out of the sixth round back in April, Sala Amuvai Laulu. And partner, I know we've gone back and forth on on Sala and just the, the great story that he is too, the, the football pedigree and maybe even a potential comeback story here, underdog story to be the starting left guard. We got a lot to get into, but I know you and I have been fired up to, to get this on the calendar for quite some time. This is going to be excellent. I don't even know if Sala knows how much of a buzz he's created among Ravens flock. So, uh, you know, with, with his play so far in the off season, so it'll be fun to talk with him. All right, let's bring him in without further ado. Sala, welcome into the vault. And man, you, you've just had a, a heck of a, a, a summer so far uh, to start off your NFL career. And we're not even talking about stuff on the field. So please, uh, you know, update us on, on your wedding and, and how everything's gone so far and, and since you, you heard your name called uh, on day three of the draft. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank you guys uh, for uh, inviting me. And uh, I just want to say uh, so far, it's been a wonderful experience, to be honest. Uh, getting my name called from the uh, Baltimore Ravens, it's a true uh, blessing to be here and be with you guys as well as everyone over here. And uh, so how wedding, long ago did you, Yeah, yeah, tell us about your wedding. I was going to say, how long ago uh, my was that? It's was, really uh, recent, a week and a half right? ago. Yes, yes, ma'am. My uh, wedding was about a week and a half ago, and, man, it was fun. There was about 300-plus people there, and we are doing a cultural uh, wedding like a Samoan and Tongan uh, day, uh, what's called wedding, and it was very nice. So I'm so, curious, how did you propose to her? Uh, I proposed to her, uh, it was called like uh, at a garden back home in Hawaii, and uh, I just knew she was the one, so I just proposed to her at the garden on, on the bridge, and it was like a beautiful uh, scenery, so, yeah. It's awesome, man. <laughs> you know, you... you you know, you spent so much of your childhood in, in Hawaii, like you mentioned, but you're born in Alaska, right? And then you end up at Oregon. Now you're in Baltimore. Like, dude, you've been all over the world. What, what's your all life over. been like to date? And, and what does travel mean to you at this point? Well, I would say, like, I would say it's a great experience. Uh, it's called uh, see other environments and uh, learn from other people and uh, adjusting to uh, other environments. So, so far, so good. Like, I've been to junior college in Texas, at Navarro Junior College, and it was, it was pretty hot there. And I could adjust over here, so, yeah. <laughs> you can handle it all. Well, well, switching gears a little bit, get, getting a little bit more into football, um, obviously we were all trying to learn quite a bit about you once you were drafted. And mm -hmm. then it was John Harbaugh, I think at the mandatory mini camps where, you know, somebody was asking him about the left guard starting spot. It's one of the few um, unsettled positions. Mm -hmm. And then he drops some, some pretty nice praise for you. Bobby, do we have that sound bite? We do. Let me pull it up right quick, All just right. in case Salah hasn't heard it, because uh, maybe, maybe this has already come across your desk, Salah. But here is Harbs back in, during mandatory minicamp to Sarah's point when asked about uh, you know, the starting left guard competition. Along the same lines, we saw the rookie all over to take a lot of first team reps at left guard. Um, I know it's hard to judge without the pads, but has he put himself in a position to compete for the starting job from July? He has, Giles. He has, he has done a great job, and he's in the mix right now. I'd say you saw him with the first team. We wanted to get a look at him in there and see how it looked with him in there. One thing we always try to do, and, and I think this is a little bit rare, but we want to see what guys look like with the first group. You know, what does it look like? I can, you can speculate all you want. If they start doing a good job with the second group or the third group and you feel like they're up to it, you know, I want to see how that fits. And, and uh, it, it looked like it fit well. Now, now, Sala, we've been covering John Harbaugh for years, okay? I know, I know when he's giving an actual compliment versus just, you know, saying what he needs to say. If you were just like a guy, he would have just been like, oh, you know, he'll be in the mix. But when he says he deserved a chance and he looked pretty good, I know that's a real compliment. What does it mean to you to 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 catch your head coach's eye so quickly? Uh, I would say it's, it's a great experience, but at the moment, uh, just, just stay humble and just keep grinding. So that's that's how I feel every day is a, 
a great day to work. That's what I treat it as. You know, Sally, you go back to to April, right? And you and you hear your name called, and you know you got guys talking about you on on all kinds of different national networks, regional, local, you name it. And one thing that I constantly w was seeing was the word developmental, developmental tackle. Do you, um, d d does that create a buzz within you, a, a competitive fire within you? Because now, according to your head coach, you know, you're going to have a shot here over training camp to compete for the left guard slot. So does that mean anything to you as a developmental, or at least labeled as a developmental tackle coming out of college? Uh, my main focus is, just uh, stay hungry and just stay humble and just focus on uh, the present, I many as today and tomorrow. So that's what I treat it as. Yeah, it's it's a good attitude to have. So like, just because people think of you as as a tackle because that's what you played at Oregon. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, you played left guard. Not only that, you were the number one rated JUCO guard is that correct so you're pretty comfortable there also in addition to tackle uh whatever whatever position the, the coach gives me uh, i'll play to be honest and uh just help the team to win the championships of course but you do have experience at guard am i correct in that yes ma'am guard and tackle yeah okay <laughs> Sounds like we got another Patrick McCarry on our hands here. You know, one yeah. of your teammates literally plays like up and down the offensive line over his, his years. And it really led to him cashing in in a big way uh, a year or so ago. I wonder, you know, through the short amount of time that you've been in the building and man mandatory minicamp and, and OTAs and whatnot, have you had a chance to, to get to know a guy like Patrick or, um, you know, definitely. Yeah. I was thought that I met all the vets and they're, they're great human beings and I like to learn from them. And uh, Patrick is one of them, and I'm thankful for him to be over here and uh, help the, the young guys. So, that's Is the there anybody that you've really connected with among the offensive line with coaches or players that's really taken you under their wing? Uh, pretty much all of them, to be honest, all the vets and uh, as well as the, the online coaches. And they're pretty good. I agree. You know, Sal, as you've already figured out, uh, Joe D'Alessandris means business and he's been around for a while and, and he's, he's built a lot of great off and developed and, and grown with a lot of great offensive linemen, really cultivated them throughout his years in Baltimore. Um, does he have a vision for you? And what were your first impressions uh, of what Joe D brings to the organization? Uh, just, just be out there and just have fun and just uh, be a hard worker. And I enjoyed every moment uh, in practice as well as the, the classroom and been soaking every moment uh, with what he teaches us and use it on the field. So that was it. Was so I'm, su I'm super curious about your, your journey from high school to, to JUCO. You said off top you were in Navarro, right? In, in Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, do you kind of take pride in that, that route? I mean, it, it's not like you went, you know, from high school to Alabama or, you know, from high school to Oregon. What what do you think you learned from that journey to kind of go through the JUCO route, being the number one rated guard? Like, what did you learn from that experience? I learned that experience, uh, what's called, like, back in junior college was like a, like starting from the lowest to lowest and then it was called, like, working myself up and it helped my mentality uh, grow even more stronger and more hungrier as a player. And I feel like the Juco is like a hard route compared to like being a D1 and stuff. But I feel like, I was called, I don't know how to explain it to you, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know how to explain it to you to be honest. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about your measurables then. Yeah. Right, because right now I'm looking at, I'm looking at 6'5", 322. Can you catch us up to speed there? Is that accurate or? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Six okay, so six five three twenty two. What? How, how would you say? Um, <laughs> what is it like going up against you in the trenches? Is basically what I'm trying to envision being on the other end of, of, of that defensive front. What was, that would be like? I'll say it's pretty fun going against like the best of the best, like every day, and uh, learning how to adjust is uh, another great thing. I would say. 
have you have you connected much? I know that you mentioned off top. Obviously, you got married in Hawaii, lived there for a while. You said that you had some some Tong, Tongan um, kind of elements in in your wedding. Um, have you and Ronnie Stanley connected over kind of your Polynesian background thus far? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, he's Tongan, and uh, it's pretty funny. I was talking see him every day. We always uh, say what's up, like hey, Toko, hey, what's up, and stuff like that. So. <laughs> It's pretty fun not seeing him around uh, every day. <laughs> so, right, so know. back, so when I was first, sorry, Bobby, I just want to keep on this Polynesian theme. Back yeah. when I first started, I used to work at the Ravens, uh, uh, Salas. So I started there in 2005, and I, I, maybe you know him. So I knew Edwin Mulitalo pretty mm. well, and uh, he also had a Polynesian background. And he would try to like. I remember my first year there. It was 2005. He would do these Polynesian kind of community parties. Mm. where he'd have some of the community from Baltimore to kind of come in and he'd serve, you know, food. He also brought the haka dance, you know, out, you know, <laughs> to, to the Ravens. I remember, um, oh, what's the HBO show, Bobby? The, the Hard Knocks. And yeah. he kind of on the HBO show, he showed everybody the dance and, and all of that. And so, and then when H Haloti Nada, you, do you know Haloti? Yes, ma'am. Uh, he's Hel a Oregon, Oregon Ducks. <laughs> That's what oh, I yeah. thought. I figured with Polynesian... <laughs> then Oregon and now Baltimore. Do you guys still keep in contact? Uh, most definitely. Awesome. Yeah. So I remember when when uh, Haloti was here, he did a super luau once. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm bringing this all, all about because I'm wondering um, if you and Ronnie have ever spoken about doing those types of things, bringing kind of like a Polynesian type celebration to the community where maybe Baltimore could learn more about that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, probably will uh, throughout the future, to be honest. So yeah. looking forward well, to it. Well, what about Haloti? I mean, has he given you any tips or advice about the organization and stuff? Uh, I'm not the moment right now. Yeah. In all fairness, you haven't had one training camp under your belt yet. So a lot of this probably is still to come, right? A lot of these, a lot yeah. of these moments, a lot of these experiences are, are, are probably still to come, I would think. But, um, you know, Ronnie, one of the things I think about when I think of Ronnie is is uh, the first season that I started covering the team solid back in, in 2019. And if you can remember that, that was sort of, you know, that was Lamar's unanimous MVP year, 14 and two, all of that. And uh, I can remember Ronnie saying something along the lines of, I never expected to be running down the field this much <laughs> in my life. Like the fact that Lamar can extend plays, you know, the fact that uh, he can break so many tackles it almost requires uh, you as an offensive lineman to run with him, right? And be a, be a blocker in any kind of capacity. Uh, are you prepared to run with Lamar Jackson downfield? Uh, most definitely. As long as we win, that's all that matters so, for the team. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right, now, Stella, here's, here's a question for you. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. Obviously, people are still trying to um, – come up with a great nickname for you okay <laughs> so so i saw somebody went to twitter twitter uh actually friend of the show i think cole jackson put this out bobby so yeah. he he went to twitter and yeah. he asked the guys um or he asked everybody on twitter like can we come up with a great nickname so here are some nicknames i'm gonna give you four i want to see <laughs> if you approve of any of these okay so yeah. one guy came up with Sala Mala or Sala the Mala, like ma as a, as a Mahler, right? Okay, yeah. so there's option A. Okay, this one I kind of, well, if you're a Star Wars person, there's Darth Maul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then your Twitter handle I, I've seen is Solid the Beast. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something you've had in the past. Yeah. And then as you've mentioned at your presser, I think you said before that people call you Big Sala. Yes, yes, um, I'm, You seem like a laid back guy. You'd be cool with any of those, but is there one that, that kind of stick out to you more than the others? Uh, I'll say, like, usually a lot of people call me Big Sala or Sala the Beast. So, okay. But All either, right. either way, it don't matter to be honest out of those four. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Man, I should have came with that off the top. I'm sorry. Yeah, Big Sala or Sala the Beast. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. along I these like same Sala, lines. I like Sala the Mala. Uh, Ooh. Go ahead. If you if you like okay. that, go ahead. <laughs> Man, Sarah, you're not kidding. He is laid back. Yeah. Sally, you're you're so soft spoken, right? So like the fact that that your your Twitter handle, you know, is is solid to beast, 
You're now in the NFL. You, you've you've already exceeded expectations, I'm sure, of so many that that have been around your your football career to date. But when is that flip switched? How not when is it? Because I know when it is. But how is that switch flipped? Because clearly you got to where you are at some point, you know, for some reason. I would say uh, it, it flips when when I'm on the field, and as well as uh, in the classroom, like. I just love the game when uh, when it comes to being on the field. It's like a it's, it's like a different feeling if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like going against the yeah. best of the best every day, and it's just like, dang, I get I got to go against uh, the best of the best. Like makes me happy. Yeah. 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 Can, yeah. Prove yourself can you, against them. Yeah. Can you take us inside? Like, you just said off the fields or or you know studying in the classroom. I think that's what you said. It makes makes me think. Like, can you take us inside what it's like? for a rookie um, development wise film study from a film study standpoint, what have you been doing since you had your, um, your name called? I imagine you have an iPad. I imagine you have access to all kinds of scheme related things. What has that process been like? Uh, so far, uh, so good. Uh, I've just been studying like all kinds of different techniques, uh, learning, learning from others as well. And I'll say so far it's been, pretty good like adjusting i would say yeah 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 so so sala i know that like based off your answers so far for sure you kind of seem like a guy that's like look just let me grind just let me work <laughs> and let the the chips fall where they may but no interviews you, yeah yeah <laughs> Outside of just like keeping your head down and grinding, and by the way, you, you can't go wrong with that, right? You can't go wrong with just grinding. Do you have any personal goals that you want to do in this first year? Like, like is the starting left hand or starting left hand is the starting left guard role something that you have a goal to have? And if if it's not that, what is your goal for this first year? So I'm not really thinking about like goals. I treat it as standards, but. My standard is uh, treated as uh, like day by day, just focus uh, what's ahead of me. I'm not trying to think about the starting position or anything about that. I'm just trying to work and uh, be with the teammates and uh, just have fun. <laughs> yeah. What what did they tell you when, when you when you had your ultimate draft day call and, and you had those initial conversations after becoming a Baltimore Raven? Did they tell you what uh, attracted them about your game, which which led to the the call? Uh, just the way I play, like physical and uh, fast, and uh, the way I pull, stuff like they they love my game. So oh yeah, the way you pull, the Sarah, way you the pull. way you pulls. I mean, there as soon it is. As you said that I was like, now I know why they have you at left guard. <laughs> they have the left guard pulling all the time, or at least frequently, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that's and, definitely interesting. Well, Bobby, yeah. I have one last last question. I don't know if you had another one before I put this in that's more football-related. This one's not football-related. Did you have any Go others? Ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, so this is your last one. Uh, and I and I wanted to do this one because I'm a faith-based person, and I noticed that on your Twitter you have a scripture in there on your yeah. on your bio. And the Bible verse is, I think I I think this is it, 2 Samuel 22, 2, yeah. which which I believe reads. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Is that your favorite scripture? And if so, uh, why? Uh, I would say, like, the Lord is like my rock, my shield. And uh, everywhere I go, he's always going to be there uh, for me. So that's why I, I take that everywhere I go. So. Amen. It's going to fit in perfectly with the Ravens locker room. I'm sure you've had a chance to catch up with John Harbaugh. He's definitely a man of faith. So I think that'll that'll definitely be a good match. But um. Solid. Congratulations on everything that's happened to Thank date, you. both you know, your wedding, your marriage, your future, you. the draft. Uh, it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be a whirlwind over the course of the next month or so. I'm sure you're going to be coming to Baltimore here relatively shortly to start camp next week. And uh, with that, you know, we would absolutely love to have you on again at some point this season. We wish you the best of luck, regardless of Great. whether or not the left guard thing pans out. And thanks so much for dropping inside the vault, man. Oh, thank you, guys. Uh, have a great day. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you, Sala. All right, partner. That is Big Sala or Salad the Beast or Mauler or whatever, which one you wanted. Uh, that's <laughs> that's Sala, our first introduction. A man of not too many words, but clearly prideful, super kind, um, you know, passionate about what he does. And I I hope the best for him. It's just hard to 
it's really hard to get a lot out of him. We were trying our best there, but we do appreciate his time, of course. Sala the Mala. Yeah, no, all I care about is if uh if he if he wins that left guard job or can back it up or whatever. So um yeah, and and judging by you know his his first couple of interviews he's done with media in Baltimore after he was drafted, and then I think I can't remember what camp it might have been rookie camp or OTAs or something, one of them. Um He's not a guy of, of, of a lot of words. Um, but I, it's like I said to him in there, sometimes it's just refreshing to be around people who just like, don't care about noise. Don't need to, they don't need to say a lot. It's like, can you just let me go play football? You know, can you, can you just let me go and hit somebody? And you know, a lot of the, a lot of the times, you know, like he said, it's like when he goes, he goes to the football field and it just, the switch flips. And when that flip switches, he's obviously doing something right because he, you know, as we we discussed, he's in that mix for that starting role, which really is a rookie, a six round rookie, is almost unheard of, Bobby. Yeah, no, I I was trying to like dig a little bit deeper in terms of like what changes, you know, because he was so soft spoken and and clearly at six five three twenty two is that what I said? Like that isn't that's pretty wild measurables right there and so clearly once he gets into the trenches he ain't gonna be soft-spoken or maybe he just doesn't talk maybe he just mauls in the trenches and he's still soft-spoken like he doesn't say much but maybe he just becomes a mauler and his face doesn't change <laughs> i don't know it's gonna be totally. fun to watch but but i think that's definitely one of the more especially based on the clip that you heard from harbs you know during yeah. minicamp earlier on in the show it's gonna be one of the more compelling positional battles that we probably watch over the next month or so. So well, we figured and, it'd be good timing to have him on, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I do want to kind of elaborate because um, I have said in the past, and I do stand by this, it, in an ideal world, it would be nice if he won it. Like, just like, and not just won it because other guys didn't step up, but, you know, it'd be nice if he won it because there was competition. And he just, yeah, yeah and he just, he just beat everybody. Um, but remember when we did the, um, the, the same worse or better when we when we were comparing this year's roster to last year's position by position mm -hmm. and i said that i felt like it was essentially the same because i felt like whoever wins it could probably pay play to the level of um of powers okay so what's funny is i went on later and we should probably have him onto the show too is i went on um film study show with ken mccusick right mm -hmm. and so um <clears throat> I don't remember. We weren't, we weren't talking. Oh no, we were one of the people. So what we were doing is we were reviewing or projecting what we took two players and said what we thought would be a good or great season. So one of the people I had was, was Simpson who's competing with Sala. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, I just wanted to give another perspective because I know you and I had agreed on it and sometimes it's just nice to hear other perspectives. So Ken <clears throat> was, feels like it's going to be a step back no matter what, which one of the three won the job or maybe somebody else comes in, but whether it's Sala or whether it's um, John Simpson or uh, Ben Cleveland, he feels like it's going to be a step back because while Powers wasn't a, a Pro Bowl level, he was so consistent. He didn't feel like, <clears throat> so with Simpson, for, for example, I had gone in and I had done more re research on Simpson and I was like, how the heck did he get cut? Because he was still on a rookie deal. He was a starter by his second year. <clears throat> he wasn't terrible. And so I wanted to ask Ken, have you been watching film? <clears throat> I admittedly haven't watched any of the Raiders film, so I don't yeah. know. And and he did get, by the way, he seemed like a scapegoat in being cut. It was after, do you remember that game where Baker Mayfield came in last minute for the Rams? And he goes oh, yeah. on, to, I think it was like a Thursday night game, one of the prime night primetime games. And nobody expects the Rams to win because Baker Mayfield is coming out of nowhere. Anyway, Raiders have like this huge lead and they melt down. Okay. They end up losing yeah, it was the game. A disaster. When it was a disaster, right? So the next day, and by the way, their left guard, the Raiders left guard who had beat out Simpson for the job, he gets injured. So Simpson goes in for like part of the game. It wasn't the whole game. And the next day he's cut. So some of the people in the Raiders, when I re are researching it, content creators like you and I are like, he was just a scapegoat. He didn't deserve to get cut, you know, yada, okay. yada, yada. So I go to Ken and I'm like, do you think it's because of the regime change that it was like, 
Mayock and his draft versus, you know, the new, the new blood that they have in now. And he, and he told me, he's like, here's why he goes, I can't say for sure. He goes, but Simpson has a bad habit with penalties. Okay. Oh boy. Which is the worst with offensive linemen, but it wasn't even. So I, I wish I had the numbers. This is why we need to bring him on. Cause he had the numbers all in front of him. There were a large number of penalties and a vast majority of them, Bobby, were post snap. So it wasn't oh like, okay, a fo- right. So it was usually like holding or something like that, which is an indication that they're getting beat, that somebody's getting beat. That's why you end up holding and all that kind of stuff. So he was like, hey, that could all change. The Ravens have an excellent offensive line coach, as you've pointed out many times on this show. And he's like, that could change. But that's one reason why Ken McCusick is nervous about Simpson. Ben Cleveland. Okay. Ben Cleveland, I'm not ready to write off yet. I mean, Powers didn't become a thing until his fourth year. You know what I mean? So it's like, even if Ben Cleveland doesn't win it this year, I'm still holding out hope that maybe his fourth year. So I said, well, why are you writing off Sala coming all the way back to to our guest? And I said, the fact that he's even like in the conversation is a big deal. And Ken was like, yeah, well, he's like, I hope that Sala is that guy. He just says, just so you know, if Sala somehow defies all odds, Sala would be an outlier. He said, I've been, and he does, he does offensive line grading literally every single week. I do not have the patience for that. So, um, yeah. you know, bless him for doing that. But he literally watches every single snap and gives I don't a have the stamina off. for it. Don't have the stamina. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I know he doesn't sleep at night. I will say that. He doesn't, um, yeah. No, so, but he gives a grade for every single play for every single guy. <clears throat> And he's like, I'll just say, after grading for decades that he's been doing it, he's like putting a hope that a rookie could somehow come in and be better than Powers or even the same as Powers. He's like, I'm just not buying it. And that's nothing against Sala. It's just like the the rookie scale. So anyway, it kind of made me double rethink, like, are the Ravens the same? They still could be. Um, But I just wanted to give that, that other perspective. And I think that if Sala were to win it, I actually think it'll probably be a rotation to start. Um, I could see the Ravens, ro- they've done it before when they haven't totally settled on a starter. They want to see him in game action. They've rotated offensive linemen, give two mm-hmm. series to one guy, then give two series to another guy, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll just say this. If Sala even gets into a starting rotation based off of the history that Ken gave me, that would be absolutely extraordinary. Completely, That's a win. Com- a complete yeah. outlier for sure. Yeah, that's a win for Sala. He'll, he'll be defying the number, Ken's numbers, Ken's logic. Yeah. He'll be defying that. That'll be cool. So, but yeah, hopefully we can, we'll stay in touch with, with Sala. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll try to continue now that training camp is, is coming up on the near horizon here. We'll, we'll try to really start to boost. Uh, Femi actually just reached out to me today to, to kind of catch up. I mean, you know how it goes like in the first half of July, maybe even late June, people around the NFL are just trying to kind of, get family time in, you know, vacation, uh, watch baseball, you know, do something that's outside of the, really the 10 month, 11 month grind that is, you know, the NFL calendar. So we're definitely going to start to boost everything we have coming up, uh, including at the very top of that list, our daily content. So anyway, for my co-host, Sarah Ellison, I'm Bobby Trossett signing off from this featured guest version inside the vault. Sala, the rookie tackle out of Oregon, drops by to make his debut with us, and hopefully we can chat with many more of the rookies over the course of this 2023 season.